In terms of actual content, of course, an important element in The Lord of the Rings, which plays no other part, no part in The Hobbit, I think, or, no, or in The Silmarillion, but plays a very important part in The Lord of the Rings, is the Kingdom of Rohan, which is modelled on, in a sense, transformed, it's not supposed to be historical because it's in the secondary world, but the inspiration for Rohan derives very evidently from Anglo-Saxon England. And the philology does not derive from uh, any direct imitation of real languages in the world, not at all. But of course it does derive from his mastery of the history of actual languages. That is to say, his knowledge of the history of English, German, so forth, other than Germanic languages. Uh, he used this. He used this kind of knowledge, his knowledge of phonetics, of phonetic history, to devise his own languages. That is what gives them their extraordinary credibility because he composed them historically. He started from ancient forms and just as with a real language within the history of Middle-earth he devised the changes of pronunciation that overtook them just as they do in real languages. And therefore, if he wanted a new word within one of these languages, he didn't uh, simply select a few syllables that attracted him. He worked out what that word would actually be. And he works out, as it were, the sound changes that will, it fictionally, will have passed over them in the course of time, as they do in all languages. And this is what gives to these languages their extraordinary, one of the most powerful things in his, in his works, even for those who have no understanding of the nature of the philology, this extraordinary sense that they, they cohere, they are real, they have the trademark of being a totally individual speech. Just as even if you don't know French, you can say, that's French or that's Swedish because they have the characteristic note and quality, and his languages do that. And were the languages Tolkien created comprehensive? They're not entirely comprehensive because uh, they don't have a big enough vocabulary. On the other hand, uh, I think what you do when you're creating languages is to work out the grammar first, and then, in Tolkien's case, you work out the main verbal roots, and then you play around with the verbal roots. And at the end of it, you have uh, the grammar and the beginnings of a dictionary. Uh, but you also have the uh, potential for creating the rest of the dictionary. But you don't have to create the whole of the dictionary. You only use the words you happen to, to, to need at that particular moment. I first began seriously to invent languages about the um, time I was 13 or 14. I've never stopped, really. Languages have a flavor to me, which I, I never understand people saying, saying, for instance, it was awfully dry and dull, because a new language to me is, is just like taking a new wine or a new sweet beet or something. As the creator or sub-creator of these languages, uh, he could take great delight in them because he could make the sounds that were developed by the phonetic changes attractive to his own ear. So that he could say that Quenya was the language that he really deeply desired, whereas none of the languages of the world really came quite there. He loved Anglo-Saxon, but he didn't like it as much. He loved Finnish which was an important influence on Quenya. But Quenya was the language of his heart. It was the language that he wanted. Well, what I'm doing now is to try and write in Elvish, which I'm saying my writing is very in theory to the elf. Their standard meeting when meeting, a star shines upon our meeting. I made a mistake, didn't I? Oh, wait. And that stands for Ellen Sila 
Lumen Omenti Elvo. It's a piece of rather beautiful language, I think. Ariel de Reskil Toniel, Sidivren Penamiriel o Menel Aglar Elenas, Nachaired Palandiriel o Galazremmin Enoras, Fanuilos Lelinathon, Nevaia Si Nevaiaron. During the long years in which he worked on the languages and the legends, the stories themselves seemed to evolve as if under other influence than that of their creator. 